Okay, so do a little uh, tour of the homestead and I'll show you what's going on. Okay, it's um, the last day of July. It's just uh, just past nine o'clock, just starting to get dark. We're doing bell ringing practice over at the church, which is not far from our house. So you'll hear that in a minute, probably. I was just having a last uh, kind of check around the sheep before we go to bed. And uh, I try to check them twice a day to so spot if there's any problems or not. And I've been really pleased with the sheep this year. They've, um, I've kept them moving. I've been quite religious about moving them every two weeks. I've only drenched the lambs once, and I've only drenched the sheep once. Uh, none of them seem to be losing condition. Um, so I was talking to a vet yesterday and he was talking about um, you can get the faeces checked for worms because um, you can't really see it by the naked eye. The ones you can see, the tapeworms, don't actually have much of a detrimental effect on the animals. So um, it's quite funny I moved them in here, not yesterday, the day before, I think it was with the girls. And there's a gate over there into my little coppice. And one of the lambs, must have remembered when it was small, and straight underneath. And uh, straight in there, straight eating one of my apple trees. So they know where the good stuff is, uh, straight away. So uh, yeah, you've got to keep an eye on sheep. They always want to get out. So, um, but they seem happy with a fresh bit of grass. And I'll move them down to the bottom pasture, which is four acres hopefully well a week and a half time maybe and then when I move them back I'm gonna wean the sheep off uh, wean the lambs off the sheep so there'll be a bit of blare in one night and then the next night they were forgotten but uh, needs doing the lambs getting pretty big now some of them ready to go really so it's just something I need to be mindful of excuse me right a quick look at the uh, Everything else is a bit closer to the house, so you've got the chickens and the, the gardens. So I went to visit a garden last week. Um, they do a market garden, kind of five, well, it's five acre farm, uh, all vegetables. So I'm, cause I'm really considering now kind of upping it and going to a kind of a quarter of an acre, half acre CSA. So this area here, which I've been using as kind of tractor, kind of driving around area, I'm thinking of turning this over. I'm going to put a lay over it over the autumn and uh, winter and kill it off in the summer and in the spring I mean with some tarps and plant here so this is what I'm thinking of doing maybe a small kind of six to ten member CSA and some restaurant sales and I contact the restaurant at the weekend as well to see if they're interested in some more of my new unusual stuff I've got growing these um, chicken pens I did a video on this the other day so these e easy to move chicken pens they've been brilliant I've got one here and uh, one, another one down in the orchard and one half made up as well and uh, it's great chickens get fresh grass every day and um, they get moved they're not on top of their poop the only um, downside is you have to move it every day but it doesn't take long with a sack truck these are these are some new birds I've had they've only been here a week I um, culled all my last ones I have the ex-commercial birds these were free range ones and uh, oh, I think I've got Japanese wineberry. I have not tried one before and that one's ready to That's delicious Anyway, sorry get distracted. So I um, yeah, I got 20 new birds cold off my old ones and um, They just take a little while to adjust so I've got a real drop in egg numbers for another couple of weeks and Then uh, they'll be back up to full production. Hopefully in time the, the school run and I can sell my eggs again so this garden, I'm not going to go through it again. We've gone through it before. 
but it's it's looking really good. The quinoa there is like seven foot tall, so it's doing really well. And if you just look at this squash, can you see how big that is? Can you see? So I mean, compared to my arm, you can see it's is bigger than my arm. Absolute monster winter squash. So I'm really, and there's loads in there. Everywhere I look, there's more and more winter squash. So I'm hoping this year I'm going to get a good crop of winter squash that I can store and be a real staple for us. I um, I harvested all the soup peas the other day. I've got two kilos of soup peas off one bed. Not a huge crop, but I'm hoping, yeah, it's a good storage crop. It keeps pretty much forever. So I'm hoping there's some good stuff I can do with that. And um, earlier in the year, I thought it was a good idea to put some squashes in the compost heap. Two empty ones either side, which I've filled. But it does make it quite hard to get to your compost bin. So if you can see this, this is just two squashes here. They've gone absolutely mental. This is called Oregon Homestead, but oh, I am pleased. You can see, I mean, look at the, you can see the squashes there. I've also got a few potatoes coming out the side. It's always a, a risk with the uh, compost bins. I won't go around the garden properly. I've done that plenty of times lately, but uh, I will show you. I am having a few issues with pests. Um, the cabbage white butterflies, not too bad this year. I've actually, Taking the nets off my kale there, and it, they don't seem to have bothered it too much. I think pigeons are probably more of a pest than anything else. But down here, I've got this lovely crop of French beans. Um, they've been doing really well. And we've had about two and a half kilos off there so far. Um, I much prefer the dwarf ones. But what I am having, if I find one, is issues with mice eating them, and I've got yeah, no end of that. And it's really bugging me. So what I've done is I've Elliot Coleman in his book has got some uh, like little mouse little boxes with mouse traps in. So and I've got one here. You see that actually the mouse has triggered the trap and not set it off. And I've got some more up there by my beetroots and my carrots because they do love them. But I need to make some more. And um, but I am so I'm double cropping. I mean these were obviously these ones were the ones with potatoes. These are ready to crop now. So I've already had potatoes. I'm gonna have beets out there. And I'm gonna get something else in. Those are my purple sprouting. They've also had potatoes in that bed as well, which is really good. And then this one's had my peas. So I've just transplanted in the um, can can lettuce. Really good variety of lettuce. I've got one up here actually, which followed my. Uh, what did it follow? Just some radishes. But you see this can can lettuce. And they're weighing nearly half a kilo for a head of lettuce. They're absolutely beautiful as well. Really nice. Everyone loves them who has one. And then. Um, just further on down, if I hop the fence. Ah. I've got this patch that I was uh, did a little video on before about a fertility patch. I did everything as plugs and some green manures down. But look at this, this is all bare ground, like less than a month ago. i uh, got sunflowers up to my waist, so I'm going to crop them soon as a compost bulking agent. Got um, lots of mustard. Around the other side, I've got buckwheat and I've got red seed poppies, which is quite cool. The squashes never really took, actually. I did put some squashes in there and I have to admit they've not taken, but everything else is doing really well. I think the squashes are just a bit late, I think. And I've got my other chicken coop down here. This is number one. So there's 10 birds in each one and a cockerel walking around outside just uh, wondering why he's not allowed in. But uh, They've, yeah, you can see that every day they spread the poop, I don't know if you can see actually, around the back. Like I say, it gets moved every day. If you can see that really in this light. But every day it gets eaten down and the poop gets spread. So that's really cool. And they're not on top of it. And there's no clean out for me, which I really like. And the chickens seem to really appreciate it. So uh, that's they've been a really real success for me actually. I'm really pleased with those chicken coops. Okay, if you've liked this video, please click the thumbs up, press subscribe, and pop over to the blog. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, bloody, bloody, bloody. There's lots of them there. Um, come on over. Thank you. Come the camera. Please if she green. No, that's not what I said. What? Peas if you please. Please if you green. No! <laughs> Peas if you please. Please if you green. What? Please. There's no greens. What? Say it again. Please. No. Please. No. Please. No. Peas. Please. Please. No. Peas. Please. No.
Peas. Peas. If. If. You. You. Please. please. Say it again. Please, if you please. No! <laughs> <laughs> say it again, say it again. <laughs> please, if you please. No! I can't remember! Look, peas. Peas. If you please. No! <laughs> right, try again. Well, that's it. Take your dress out of your mouth. Try again. Please, please. No, please if you please. Please if you please. No, please if you please. Please? No! <laughs> I can't remember! Go on. Please if you please. Please if you please. No! <laughs> please if you please. Please, if you please. <laughs> please, if you please. Please, if you please. Yay! <laughs>